Hey guys, in this month's Historical Fiction 101, I'm going to be sharing with you the top 20 books that were nominated this year uh, for Goodreads in the best of historical fiction. So yeah, you guys, I have 20 books to get through here. I'm going to look at my notes the entire time. And yeah, these are all books uh, that were nominated this year for the Best of Historical Fiction 2017. And there's definitely some very, very good ones here. I definitely want to check all of these out. And yeah, just a quick warning, you guys. There's 20 books here. I cannot go into detail about every single one. The summaries I have here are very very basic and very very vague so I highly suggest if you are curious maybe put a tab up in somewhere on your screen and go to Goodreads as I talk about these books and yes hunt them down if you want to learn more about them like I said very very vague summaries here because I got to get through this video as quick as possible or we'd be here forever so the first book we have here is A Column of Fire by Ken Follett and this is actually book three in the Kingsbridge series following the religious conflict of the Catholics and the Protestants and if you don't already know this is a uh, book three kind of part of that whole that whole trilogy of books uh, associated with the Pillars of the Earth and I'm very ashamed I have not read Pillars of the Earth yet and it's definitely a classic when it comes to historical fiction so I definitely need to pick that up but yeah this is book three in that particular series if you happen to be following it next A Piece of the World by Christina Baker Klein and this takes place in Maine and it follows the woman who inspired the painting called Christina's World. And you guys, I had no idea what this painting was because yeah, off of the, the plot summary, you know, it says the classic painting. And I was like, I've never heard of this painting in my life. You know, when you think of classic paintings, you think of something like the Mona Lisa. Everybody knows the Mona Lisa. So I had to go search what this painting is. So yeah, over here to the side, this is what the painting is that this novel is based off of, <laughs> if you didn't already know. Next, Before We Were Yours by Lisa Wingate. And this takes place in Memphis in 1939. And it follows five siblings who are kidnapped and sold to a wealthy family. This sounds really tragic, you guys. Uh, yeah, what, my understanding of this plot su summary, it's kind of focusing on a little, a little known thing of American history about, you know, orphan children being sold, essentially, taken from their families. Next, Beneath a Scarlet Sky by Mark Sullivan, and this follows a young Italian boy during World War II who joins an underground resistance to help Jews escape. And yeah, that definitely sounds like something I would enjoy. Next, From Sand and Ash by Amy Harmon, and this follows two friends during World War II, uh, and yeah, about the Catholic Church sheltering Jews during this time. You know, two different religions here, you know, with, with Catholics and the Jewish faith, you know, but yeah, the Catholics doing the right thing and helping the Jews during this really horrible time. Lily De Jong by Janet Benton takes place in 1883 Philadelphia, and it follows this young woman who has a child out of wedlock, but she decides to keep the child, she decides to keep the child despite threats of poverty and shame. Lincoln in the Bardo by George Saunders takes place in 1862, following Lincoln's journey, uh, President Abraham Lincoln, his journey of grief after the death of his 11-year-old son, Willie. And yeah, what I know about that is definitely a very tragic story, Lincoln losing his son, who, yeah, who died very, very young. I definitely got picked this up. It sounds like a really sad book. <laughs> Love and Other Consolation Prizes by Jamie, Jamie, yeah, Jamie Ford it takes place in 1909 uh, at the World's Fair in Seattle, and it follows this 12-year-old boy who is half Chinese, and yet he gets this opportunity while he's at the fair, uh, he gets raffled off, <laughs> which sounds kind of horrible. It sounds horrible, but the, the book make it, makes it sound like it's actually a positive thing that he's being raffled off to to a good home because it's a, he's an orphan but it sounds like he has a really good life uh, through the book through the course of the book it sounds like Manhattan Beach by Jennifer Egan this follows a young woman during World War II her father has disappeared at war and she becomes a female driver in a male dominated world Moon Glow by Michael Chabon uh, a deathbed con confessional between a grandfather and his grandson and it takes, it, it kind of flashes back, it sounds like, this man, uh, 
I guess I guess the grandfather grew up during World War II. It sounds like, and yeah, talk about the Jewish slums, uh, yeah, pre-war Philadelphia, and then yeah, leading up to this man's time in a retirement village, and I guess he spent some time in prison as well. It sounds like this book goes over the course of several several decades, because yeah, like I said, it, it's a deathbed confessional between a grandfather and his grandson. So it sounds like it might be a really heartbreaking but heartwarming story of this man's life through the decades. Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. And this is a book that I've featured in this series before. And yeah, this follows a Korean family in the early 1900s after they have been exiled from their homeland. Salt Houses by Hala Alyan. This follows a family who are uprooted after the Six Day War of 1967, essentially kind of during the Arab, essentially during the Arab-Israeli conflict, uh, where they move and try to rebuild their life. The Alice Network by Kate Quinn takes place in 1915, follows a girl who joins an underground resistance of spies, and then it goes forward to 1947, where it follows another young girl, an unmarried pregnant girl, who searches for her missing cousin during World War II. And then, yeah, then we flash forward 30 years later to some women who all come together to go on a mission to find somebody. This this was a very vague summary, even on Goodreads. Uh, what I'm giving you right now is horrible, you guys. What you need to know, it sounds like there's three different plots going on. There's, there's an event happening in 1915, an event happening in 1947, and then an event happening 30 years from the, the event of 1947. So, yeah, it sounds like there's a lot going on. But somehow it all connects and comes together. Yes, yeah, something about the Alice Network. I, I, I should have done some more research here because I don't know if the Alice Network was a, a real historical thing that happened. A network of spies? I don't know. I guess, I guess I'll find out if I ever pick this book up. Next, The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne. And this follows a gay Irish man through several decades as he struggles to find his identity, his home, and his country. This sounds like a really powerful story. The Last Tudor by Philippa Gregory. Of course, Philippa Gregory had to make the list. Uh, it follows uh, the nine-day queen of England, Lady Jane Grey. Oh, I love Lady Jane Grey, you guys. Such a tragic life. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And this follows a magazine reporter who is writing the life story of, of this woman. Uh, I guess this woman named Evelyn Hugo, <laughs> like the book is called. Uh, he's writing this woman's life story. Apparently she had a very scandalous but glamorous life in from between the 50s to the 80s. And yeah, apparently she married seven husbands. It's, it's She almost sounds like Henry VIII, <laughs> six wives, but yeah, she's going to have seven husbands. This sounds really interesting. The Stars Are Fire by Anita Shreve, and this takes place in 1947 Maine. It follows a woman and her family after their home has been destroyed by a fire, and now they are homeless and penniless. That doesn't sound good. The Tea Girl of Hummingbird Lane by Lisa C. takes place in the 1980s. It follows a Chinese mother and her daughter. Uh, her daughter has been adopted by a very wealthy family, so yeah, it kind of sounds like a journey of this mother and daughter, and yeah, I guess, will they reconnect years later, possibly? The Women in the Castle by Jessica Shattuck, and I'm really glad that this was nominated this year in this group of 20 uh, books. Uh, it's the only book that I have read this year in this category. Uh, uh, I, I did enjoy The Women in the Castle. It was a really good book. I definitely had my problems with it, but it was a good book overall, but I'm glad it got nominated. Uh, yeah, and this takes place uh, post-World War II, and it follows this woman who is collecting the widows uh, of, of the widows that their husbands were part of the failed assassination attempt on Adolf Hitler in on July of July 20th. So yeah, uh, a lot to do with that whole story. And yeah, this woman trying to find these widows because she promised her husband she would she would look for them all if something happened and the assassin and assassination attempt failed. And the very last book here, We Were the Lucky Ones by Georgia Hunter, and it follows a family of Polish Jews over six years and their struggles to survive and reunite. Yeah, there's a lot of World War II fiction in this batch this year. Uh, um, there's, I think there's some good diversity in this list, but there is a lot of similarities because I do feel like there's a lot of World War II going on. 
but that's okay. So yeah, you guys, I, I really do apologize. This video is probably really rushed. I'm not quite sure how much of this even made any sort of sense. But yeah, that's like I said, I highly suggest you go to Goodreads, look up all of these books if you want to know more about them. Yeah, my intent with this video is to make you aware of what the nominees were this year, what the top 20 books are. And yeah, they narrowed it down to 10 books. Uh, at, at the time of this video, I do not know who the winner is. So yeah, maybe if the winner has been announced by the time this video get, gets uploaded, I'll put the winner here off to the side. If not, there won't be anything here. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. In the comments below, have you guys read any of these books? Do you plan on reading any of them? And yeah, how do you feel about this batch of nominations? Uh, do you think it's a good batch or do you think there were some books that should have been on this list that weren't? So just let me know your thoughts down below and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you guys later. Bye guys.